Hi, this is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, and we're going to be talking about something really important. And we have with us, of course, Jim Meyer from Remax Gold. And we are thrilled because this is a very special edition of our show. Everybody's going to want to listen to our guest. This is Kim Walters. Hello, Kim Walters from American Pacific Mortgage. Welcome. And hopefully, we're going to talk about some confusing issues what's going on with the mortgage rates and the mortgage market today and hopefully I can clear up some confusion. Um, Kim, let me ask you a question. How can I get the zero percent interest rate mortgage? Oh, we'll start with that. An easy question. Oh, I'm sure okay. you can answer it. <laughs> well, for one thing, I hope that we don't have zero interest rates or we would never have a job. The economy would be completely sunk and you think the last recession was bad. There's not just <laughs> thing as a zero interest rate for a mortgage. I think people confuse that with when the Federal Reserve lowers their borrowing rate to zero percent for the banks to borrow money. That's all that is. This not has anything to do with mortgage rates. There are so what are, what are rates going, uh, what's happening with them right now? Uh, oh my gosh, it's like a, it's like a yo-yo, literally. Um, if they're low one day, the next day they'll be up a half a point. Uh, I've seen a one and a half point move in 10 days and I turn back around, it's down a point. There's a lot of technical reasons, you know, in the, in the industry what's happening there. But overall, this is a first time in the history of mortgages and financial that this has happened. So we can talk more about that later, but it's, uh, it's quite technical. So, um, so it's so all about, you, you know, timing of getting the right loan. I mean, right interest rate. So if one, somebody's going to plan on, on buying a house, uh, they're looking right now and they want to get into contract within say the next two weeks, how do you tell them when they should lock in that rate? Well, let's back up. Hopefully they've already got talked to me and got pre-qualified and pre-approved. So when they go, when they go get a house, they can they, the offer will be accepted. Uh -huh. so I'm going to say it's never too early to start looking, you know, getting pre-approved for a loan. I've worked with people for over six months to get prepared for the ideal time. So um, the interest rates fluctuate. They're extremely volatile. So you may have to take an interest rate that's higher than you anticipated, but then later on, you may have to refinance out. Or as a marriage specific mortgage, we can actually... If you lock in a rate, if it goes down, we can renegotiate for a lower rate by the time you close. So we kind oh. of, that's a kind of a buffer. Well, that's wonderful because a lot of people are scared that, that they, they might have locked in too high and they could lose a lot of money by not waiting or they could lose a lot of weight of money because they lock in now and then the rates go down. So you're protecting. Oh, yeah, vice versa, kind of a double-edged sword. So you got to protect for the upside. So let me just give a quick example. I locked somebody on Friday and they were going, should I lock, should I lock? I said, yes. And of course they did because they actually went up almost a half a point in one day today. That's so amazing. they're very happy with me. Yeah. But other people that lock, they always say the rate's going to go down and go down. Go When they went down and then two weeks ago when rates we had locked in and then went down again, I was able to get an interest rate change down to 3.75 less. So wow. we're very flexible. We work with people. Uh, right now, it's um, when you're buying a house, interest rate is important, but the most important thing is to close a loan. Close that loan because you're in a contract. You have a 30 days to close. You, well, people realize that they're in a contract. That's why I work with Jim. We're professionals, and we have a responsibility to get that loan closed because you're in contract to close in 30 days. And we all hope that we can get the lowest interest rate during that period of time. Now, are you saying right that now about that? Yeah, is it taking longer to close or can you still do them in 30 days? Uh, that's a great question. Um, if you're working with all the major banks and a lot of, of brokers, which we are not, we're a direct lender, I'm a loan originator, we're a big mortgage, we're taking 30 days. I don't want to mention names, but most banks, if you drive down the street and see their names, they're taking 60 to 70 days to close a purchase loan. Wow. I got to admit, I'm picking up business. Because wow, now that American because you're... Pacific Mortgage thinks way ahead. We already decentralized all of our uh, functions. So when everybody had to um, leave the office, we were already there. We already, six months ago, nine months ago, we decentralized to make things very efficient. 
to keep us, you know, really um, um, efficient and to move real fast in the marketplace. And so we haven't missed a beat. I'm closing loans of 25 to 30 days for a purchase and even a refinance is 45 days. And some of the other larger people you drive by, the banks, <laughs> uh, don't fall off your chair. 90 to 120 days for a refi. That's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. And, and, and then our rates were very, very good. Yeah. So they're, they're, they were not ready to have their people working at home. Is that basically what the problem yep. was? Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I don't leave my home. So, you know, I can't even imagine working for a bank. Um, so uh, now are the, the guidelines getting a little bit more strict? That's a good question. Yes, they are starting to tighten up, as we say, on the, on the fringes, certain, certain um, guidelines is changing. One thing that just happened is the government loans FHA went as, as deemed by first year 580, now it's 660 is the minimum credit score. They're doing away what's called as um, uh, manual underwriting. Um, there's some programs that are being eliminated, like um, um, not personal buyer programs, but um, like rehab loans, things uh -huh. like that. So uh, the actually the true guidelines about you know qualifying income wise and things like that have not changed. It's just they just um, with a higher low higher credit score, it takes out some of the, the risk at lower credit scores. And you, and you have to have a job, pretty Thank much. Thank you for that comment too. That's actually, um, yes, yeah, so actually there's some things are going on that um, like affidavits being have to be signed by the, the lender, I mean by the, the borrower and the uh, employer. So some things like that and actually some contracts are falling out because all of a sudden people got to notice that they're laid off or hours reduced. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're asking the question of that. It's kind of a hard, difficult question for me to ask that. You're going to have a job. <laughs> next yeah. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. one of the things that I notice uh, as well, there's a lot of lenders out there, of course, and there's um, some, some, some things happening a little bit in the economy right now, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, with the different choices here, I think you mentioned one of them was some pretty obvious, maybe some of the other people aren't as flexible as you. Why would somebody consider, um, you know, going with, with somebody like yourself compared to all the other competitors that are out there? Let's start with me first. I've been in the business since 1992. I've been through, this is my fifth downturn. I've been through them all. <laughs> been through the recession. I've been through the, the dot-com crash. I've been through, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, 9-11. Um, and also to our company, Mercury Mortgage, always thinks ahead. And we're very, very um, uh, stable. We have, um, right now, is liquidity is a big issue with, with loans. We have a lot of liquidity. Um, and a lot of the companies uh, aren't going to make it through. Uh, matter of fact, the first year in the year, a lot of people um, went through, and we actually bought some companies. Um, our management team is, is un unbelievable. I'm going to tell you a little about our management team, about our company. So 1989, uh, we're one of the few lenders in California that we actually have delegated underwriting. For everybody to understand that, if you're a broker, you send it to Wells Fargo, you send, I shouldn't say that, to other banks, and then you sit in the line and wait. Um, our office is based in Roseville, California. We're a local lender, and we have delegated underwriters that underwrite for certain banks. We don't have to send it to them. They trust us with the, the 30 years of being built into the trust factor of working with them. They say, we trust you to write, underwrite our loans. You serve the servicing and later on, we may buy them back from you. So, and we have money to go in and do that. So that's why I like American Pacific Mortgage and the management team is it keeps us informed, especially in this crisis, they send out bulletins and updates every you know, twice a day. I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I'm just, I can't, tell you how much confident I am with the company and the management starts at the top. Well, it seems like you have a lot of uh, good experience. You definitely, especially in this economy, everything going on, you definitely want to have, uh, you'd be working with a seasoned um, uh, lender, direct lender. Um, you know, you mentioned a few things here, you know, as well. So I think it's really great. I could tell, you know, you've been through the fire. You said five down, oh, yeah. you said five. So, so, yep. so 
what is your prediction, you know, in terms of uh, the rates? What do you think we're going to see over the next several months? Now, we did throw in a little wild card here. That's called the, uh, the virus that has been happening here. Yeah. So, so it's an interesting permutation so that uh, you don't get bored <laughs> as well with what's going on. You've been through five. Wow, this is a sixth. But there's a lot of good things uh, that, that, are, uh, that are happening out there. I'm saying good in quotes that uh, are causing angle. What is your advice to people right now in terms of looking for, you know, a loan? Should they wait a little bit? I'm definitely getting pre-approved what I heard you say. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts in terms of that? Well, it's interesting that it started out this month, especially the virus. I, I've been, and I know my colleagues have been very busy out there looking. Um, and I've had... Um, Several people call me, uh, real estate agents still working, still the, there's still being listings out there. So kind of doing business as usual and people want to buy homes and they're calling me. And um, so it's kind of weird. There no, a lot of people aren't backing off. They want to buy a house and they're ready and not like they're not taking this seriously, but um, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. I mean, the, 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 the faucet hasn't shut off. The spigot has not stopped. Actually, if anything, it seems like it's it's going pretty good. I think Jim can attest to that also about his, his probably his business. Jim, what are you saying in, in your business? Yeah. Well, I I'm hearing so a lot of people saying they they want to do they'll be a little standoffish. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just talked to a, a client uh, in Oakland who you know we've been talking about selling her house for a while now, and she wanted to do her taxes and all that. Now she says she's not leaving the house and doesn't want to do every anything, but. Uh, we've got other clients that, you know, basically are, are wanting to go out. But again, we, we're we kind of limited as realtors. Uh, until just a couple of days ago, we weren't supposed to be going out and showing houses. We cannot do open houses. Um, but we've adapted and uh, we're having sellers do virtual tours for us, you know, on their uh, phone, send us a video, et cetera. Um, and so we're, we're closing deals. Um, and we're hopefully going to be, you know, like you said, we're, we're I'm with Remax. I'm still seeing a lot of listings popping up. Uh, a lot of people have taken their houses off the market because they're not sure what's going to happen, but there's still that, that demand out there. And, uh, so I think hopefully that we're going to see, you know, a little, little hiccup here, but, uh, I would say pretty soon, uh, anybody who sees a slowdown in business, it's all going to go crazy. And, and more and more people who, who waited a few weeks are going to start buying again. So um, I don't, I think it's all going to be good in the long run. As long as we, you know, are careful and don't go and then catch a, a virus and kill each other, I think we'll be fine. Well, let's you talk know, a little bit, maybe jumping in. The thing is that you said some things are going to happen in, I try to make things as apolitical as possible. The government, uh, the federal government and the local governments all doing what they can. They've jumped in. I think we're all starting to work. We're having a little, a little arguments, a little back and forth. But uh, the government with the, with the trillion dollar thing to keep the economy going, they're doing little things like um, junk cars, you know, so you put, you know, turn your junk car and get buy a new car. That was happening in Obama when they did that with the recession. Um, the feds are going to go back and buy mortgage-backed security to stabilize the, the uh, mortgage rates like it did back in the recession. So we had a little bit of a glimpse of this, you know, um, you know, 10 years ago, that long ago, but I think they're starting to react quicker and faster and see what worked and didn't work. So kudos to, um, you know, uh, the government jumping and trying to do what we can. Uh, you know, yeah, and they're not allowing the companies to buy back their own stock. Yes, uh, right. that's a good thing to you. The free money, which... So hopefully we're not going to have a repeat of last time where the big guys get bailed out. Now we're bailing out the little guys. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and if it makes it so that fewer people lose their job and more people can buy that uh, house, that's, that's a pretty darn good thing. So. Well, you know, um, one thing I wanted to, to ask, you know, definitely on the real estate side and then uh, on the mortgage side, but first the real estate side, Jim, I know you're, uh, you know, you're actually a broker, right? And so, so the whole aspect of, you know, just seeing what's going on right now, 
What do you see buyers and sellers doing in this market right now specifically? Of course, people are still, there's still activity there, which is great. But what do you foresee over the next maybe month, two, three months or so? Uh, well, myself, what I'm, what I've personally seen is my personal clients wanting to take a, a, a little break from it and being a little cautious. Fortunately, hopefully that's just a small segment of the population uh, because right now, I mean, I'm doing really well right now. I'm having one of my, this right now, one of the best times ever as far as numbers of deals that are closing this instant that, you know, this week. So I'm, I'm very, very happy. Um, we just sold uh, one of Kim's uh, uh, associates houses yeah. uh, in yeah. Vanderbilt. And, and uh, she loves you, Kim. She thinks you're awesome. <laughs> And the um, bottom line guy. is that uh, the um, hopefully you're going to keep her working and uh, yes, I am. We are deals to, to work on, and uh, so we were very very happy to to get their house sold in I don't know what is it seven or eight days yep. uh, after we put it on the market. Uh, Kim and I went and did some open houses for these clients, and basically we sold it very very quickly. So, uh, but that was before the big outbreak. Uh, and then, you know, as Kim just said, he sees a lot of people getting qualified and buying. So I, I'm a whole, me personally, again, did really, really good last month, closing a bunch of deals right now, slowed down this last two weeks, but hopefully everything is going to explode again. So get out there and buy. And sell. Yeah, so Jim, the other Jim, <laughs> um, I got, the, um, you can call him uh, Jimmy. By the way, Jimmy, okay, who's Jimmy? Jimmy? Raise your hand. Who's Jimmy? Which one's Jimmy? No. <laughs> um, both. Let me understand the relationship that how Jim and I work. Myers, the real estate agent, other real estate agent I work with, were basically you know like this. And um, um, I like to go out and do open houses. I've been doing open houses thirty years in the business. I go out as much as I can. I'd like to do one or two to a weekend. My wife doesn't like it, but it's not like I'm down all day because um, it's really interesting that how can anybody live in a vacuum and work out of their office and not know what's going on. How can you go out and support your real estate agents? And so I really enjoy going out because when people come in, we get to talk and you see everybody from different areas, whatever else. So you get a feel of what's going on and their attitude. And the attitude is fantastic. There's a lot of pent up demand from Tuesday, from like December, January, February, and people want to buy. Also too, because now, now we're 10 years into a strong economy where it wants to take credit for it, I don't really care. <laughs> that people are really qualified and they want to buy. Their 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 credit scores are up. They're fully um, employed. They feel stable. They've got some equity in their house if they had bought a house before. So right now, it's um, without this, I thought we would have be having one of our best years. I'm pretty optimistic. I think things are going to continue. Um, people want to sell their house, and they have to they have to sell their house. People want to buy their house. Also, too, another driving force that I hear, and you, Jim, probably hear this a lot, too, is that my rent is more than what I go buy a house for right? with lower rates. And that's a big driving force. I mean, I've had two people just as they say, my rent's going up. <laughs> yeah. I want to go buy a house. Why should I rent when I can go buy? Exactly. And it, which I, I don't know how anyone is raising the rent on their tenants right now when so many tenants can't. Uh, or they're scared to, to pay the rent because yeah. they don't know that they're going to have a paycheck uh, next week. But uh, if you're a landlord and you think it's okay to, uh, to raise the rent in, in this uh, situation, then I guess, uh, you know, you're in a pretty good position, but definitely anybody who's paying rent right now, you should be paying, you should be buying, paying that house, that money for your own house and not making somebody else rich. So. Let, well, that so, makes a lot of that. sense. Yes. And so to find out if you can do that, you call Kim. Kim, how would someone get a hold of you? Um, my cell number is 925-752-5556 or my office is in Benicia. But I have a real estate office. I'm a real estate license also, but also too, I do loans all over California, four different states for license. I can do personally loans. So um and we do loans in, I think, 48 states now in the Marriage Pacific Mortgage. So um, 
Yeah, the best thing to do is just call. We just the, the first step is called pre-qualification, or just talking about it. Um, I'm a real believer. We need to talk about it, and I currently never to pull a credit report. And I'm going to tell you, don't have people pull your credit report. If you go online, you call somebody, and they insist on you pulling your credit report. I'm telling you, it's not a soft pull. I, I've been seeing this happening, and I go, what happened? Why do you have five mortgage companies, you know, listed because they told me the soft pull? Well. They're not saying the truth. I'm sorry. Don't have me pull your credit report. Just if you know your credit, they can still quote you some rates within the range and talk about different programs and what you need and answer questions without, you know, doing a full application, whatever else. So the first, the first conversation is just a conversation. Let's get to know each other and what are your needs. And then after that was the next step. So uh, let's talk uh, about uh, the different types of love. There's conventional, there's VA, there's FHA, there's also uh, private money loans, but uh, VA, I heard that there's no, is there really no limit to the loan amount now, or am I crazy? Um, yeah, VA loan is for all vested out the eligibility, either, you know, reserves or, you know, active service, zero down. So they did something crazy. Um, not to get too technical, but there used to be loan limits in every county. Mm -hmm. Say this county was, was, uh, with the 510 salon or one sitting at. Um, over above that, you could still get a loan, which had to come with a down payment. So the, so um, it depends on a, a mathematical quick arithmetic. Now they're kind of crazy. Up, you can go $2 million with no, with zero down. You have, have to have a seven credit score. But if you had a 660 credit score, no, actually a 620, you can get up to a million dollars with zero down. Is that crazy or not? Also, uh, but you have to have the income to, to pay the, the well, of payment, course, yeah, right? to qualify. Yeah. But VA also has no PMI, so it's like the best loan ever. Yeah. Um, now, also, for people that don't know, explain the PMI. Oh, that's private mortgage insurance. If you, if you put less than twenty percent down, you actually pay private mortgage insurance um, to um, help offset in case you default. That the private mortgage insurance company is going to give us, you know, twenty percent of the. Um, of the remaining balance. And then if uh, if you do an FHA loan, that uh, PMI is on there for life no matter what, correct? That is correct. And so you'd have to refinance out of that to get rid of the PMI. Right. Um, we're talking about different government loans. A government loan sponsored is FHA and VA. They do not actually lend the money. Um, mortgage companies like us get, uh, say that's a pretty good deal. We want to do FHA loans or VA loans. So we go through a vetting policy, you know, and get set up, get approved to go in and um, they allow us to lend money under their guidelines. We have to get permission and very, you know, um, we have to have certain strict, you know, compliance to what their guidelines and what their need is. And they want to help people. Um, and it's a fantastic program. Um, and so we fund the transaction and uh, FHA reviews it, you know, after the fact, but we have our guidelines we go with. Now, um, FHA has always been in, in business, you know, since the 50s to put people in homes. Like everybody knows society that society, people are better when they're in homes. That's the whole target to get people into homes. We just know society and everybody's better off that way. So that's one good thing I'm real happy about the federal government that they do help people get into homes. Right. Now, conventional loans, there's a myth that you have to have 20% down. That's not true, correct? Oh, well, that's been that way for, you know, 10 years now, 3% down. Yeah. And, but a lot of people don't, don't know that. So 3% right. down, are there, so and why would I want to do an FHA loan if, if I could do a conventional loan? Well, that's one of the, that's why it's really important that we had this, this pre-qualifying this, this talk, because there's certain aspects of FHA depends on your credit score is very critical. The most important thing to go buy in a house, not only money, but with credit scores. Huge difference between having some of the 60, 660, 620 credit score versus even a 740. Um, interest rate wise and PMI and the different programs that you have, you have it's just, it's, one's not better than the other. It's just what is for your particular situation. It's kind of, I don't want to go, I can go and talk for a half hour regarding. So my job is not just to give you options and talk about the options, present them to 
the client and have them make the decision. It's their, their loan. And sometimes it can be very obvious when you run the numbers, but you have to have something to compare with. And I've always been, um, I feel one part of my job, I feel comfortable is I'm, 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 you know, I'm their boss. I'm there to give them information. They're the ones that make decision um, what's comfort for them. And we just go through 3% down, 5% down. What's the options? Should we wait a month and get your credit scores up? So there's a lot, of, you know, you know, different things that go through this pre-qualifying in that relationship we build. At the same time, we're I'm talking with Jim and other real estate agents, you know, about that. You know, let's wait a month or can we wait a month? So we're always in constant communication, kind of a Tribeca going on here with the loan officer. Jim is the real estate agent and the client. Right. And you so, know, um, a question I have for you is that right now, um, you know, you have a lot of people that may be thinking, oh, maybe I can't afford a house or, or, you know, and so some people give up on the dream for now because they don't know what the possibilities are, right? Uh, what would your recommendation be for them? Do you have certain programs that they might qualify for? Should they check in with you anyway? Yes. Now, Jim did mention that you have the VA, and you have the conventional, Fannie Mae, and you have FHA. Now, the government also, the state of California, has two bond programs called the Cal Hapa program that, of course, American Family Mortgage is always plugging them. They're always, we, we do almost more than anybody in the state. And it's the California bond program that helps down payment assistance and, and closing cost assistance. It's not zero cost to you. It's just impossible to get, but, you know, so say you have to come in with down payment, whatever it is to be twenty five thousand. I've I've seen different cases where you can get in for five thousand. And also, there's a new program called Open Door. It's cool about this program is that you have a first and a second, and then you can have gift funds up to four percent. You have to pay back as gift. Um, so everybody's trying to get, and they realize now people now are, are getting pretty good credit. They have the income. They've got their their debt down. They just, like you said, just can't get that down payment. And everybody's fighting to get program. Well, not fighting, I should say, are working to get people in the home. We just know that's just the right thing to do. You know, society-wise and people, you know, they want they want a home. They don't want to rent. They want to have that that great feeling of home ownership. No, you know, Cal Hafa, that will go FHA or conventional, correct? Correct. And that's just my job to figure out which, which one is could best serve their needs. And, and it's interesting, it's important to know because some people like, like they can't qualify for a regular single family dwelling. And so, and they don't have a big down payment. Uh, and then there are condos out there that won't go FHA because of the subdivision won't, it won't go FHA. Cal Hapa is a great program to get into a, an inexpensive condo for very little down and uh, especially if some, maybe somebody is thinking they want to buy a, a regular four bedroom house or whatever, maybe they'll start with a little inexpensive condo. You get them in very inexpensively, live there for two, three years, we sell it, and then we move them into something that they, that they like, but they're living in their own home. And uh, so it's something very important. And uh, I'm gonna ramble on a little bit, but because um, a lot of people will go on the internet to, to try to get qualified for a loan because they saw some ad on TV or whatever, and they talked to somebody in a cubicle who's in Texas or the Philippines or whatever. The great thing about them calling you, Kim, is they can meet you face to face, or they can call you, you know, many different hours during the day, and you're going to get right back to them, uh, and you're going to talk about their specific situation, and that's why I always try to tell people, try, please stay away from these people who are gonna to try to do a loan from a, a different time zone. Because Kim is right there and he knows all the programs and, he, and, he, and, and you care about each individual. They're not just another person calling. Am yeah, I right? I'm, yeah, I'm kind of one of those crazy guys I work all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah I, well, yeah. Know, I, I look at my hair, I'm, I'm old school. I, you know, when right. I, and, and I work on the weekends and that's why, you know, I'll get a, a call from Jim or somebody and it's, you know, noon on Saturday, maybe an open house or whatever. And I was, I was telling my wife, I may take a 10 minute call. I can go talk to him in 15, 20 minutes, get him going, talk about it, get a comfort level, or maybe we have to do a quick 
you know, pre-approval. Let me go back to condos. Sorry, uh, not to regress. Um, condos are an interesting thing. The, the, the HOA has gone so high right now. I mean, we're, we, you may get a condo that's 250, but the, con, the, the HOA is 400, 450. So when you run the numbers, you actually have almost you have more purchasing power by not buying a condo. And I don't want to bash condos, but you say, well, if you're in that price range, you can almost buy a forty thousand, go up forty, fifty thousand dollars, and buy a single family home, which may put you in the threshold of buying a single family home because the HOA dues are so high for qualifying. So that I discuss that with people all the time. So we're looking at all you know all different angles, um, you know, to take care of that. And also, also the um, another aspect about the, um, and I'm not going to knock anybody, you know, trying to make a living, you know, with being mortgage. I have all respect for anybody, you know, um, out there. Um, but a lot of time, you know, Jim, that they're not going to when you make an offer, you have to have a um, a strong pre-approval. And when you're some on a, out of state, sometimes those offers aren't accepted. Right. So what we do, uh, and I, with all my real estate agents, is that um, we have a very good reputation, especially in Solano County and also actually all over the Bay Area. We can call up and say, this is Kim Walls, Bridgeport Mortgage. Oh, by the way, do you know my, uh, the owners, Mitchell and Alan? Oh, yeah, they've been in the business 40 years. Yes. Um, I understand what everybody wants to do is have a smooth transaction and they want to, everybody just wants to get it done. And uh, when you work with somebody, um, well, this is Sam in Texas, and Sam's probably a great guy, and the mortgage company is probably a great thing, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Actually, let's not be negative. Wrong. There's just a lot of details that have to take place, and you have 30 days to take care of it, and yes, we're right here to take care of it, and I'm constant communication with the real estate agent. So people just want things to go smoothly and have that personal touch, and you know, this is really important, especially in an economy like this. As we wind down, I want uh, those of you that are thinking about getting a house, you know, uh, you might be in a situation where you can afford it. You just need to get a loan and uh, definitely you want to get in contact with Kim. But you might be in a situation where eh, you're not sure. Well, definitely you want to talk to somebody very experienced, uh, you know, with uh, decades of experience that can really point you in the right direction. And it's very important, especially in this season, to make sure uh, you're with a company that understands the economy and what the options uh, are out there. And then finally, if you feel like there's no chance for a home, well, it's kind of like the lottery ticket, you know. I will tell you there's a 0% chance if you never buy the ticket. So at least check into it because you don't know what doors can be open. There are some great possibilities here that you may or may not be aware about. That's why you got to really visit the professionals that understand the market, what's available, you know, whether you're selling a home, you know, I'm going to give you a little plug here, Jim. And, you know, I know uh, you've done some great things. You just sold a house for a mutual friend, Bunny, and she's been uh, totally excited about it. I've seen you at work. You do some great open houses. You always get the job done as well, you know, and I think both of you happen to be in Solano County, right? <laughs> and yeah. so both of you are able to do some great things, pair it up together, make sure if you're looking for a home, perhaps if you don't have any alternatives, or if you're not sure where to, where to go, contact Jim or Kim, because definitely uh, there are some great options that are there out for you to at least start paving and planning the way. So before we end out here, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Kim, are there any final words you would like to give to people that are listening? Well, I, I want to take what you just said. Um, I was working with a fellow real estate agent of, with, of Jim's, and I think we set a record for the amount of time we spent with a client to get a home, 438 days. Oh my God. Wow. She had some issues. She wanted a house so bad. I don't want to go on all the personal stuff, but we worked with her for over a year. She was determined to get a house and it was, it was just different things going on with her life. And the time that we got everything worked together, the time we said, the time is now, let's do it. The time we had it and we closed in, in 30 days. And so it's, it's not my time. I mean, it's not Jim's time. I mean, it's how we work with the client. And maybe I always say, I'm going to put my track shoes on or I'm going to put my jogging shoes on, take my, <laughs> whatever. It's whatever the, the pace is for you. So, 
But once again, it's never too early. Just start talking about it. It's going to take a, a week. Fine. It's going to take a year. Who cares? You know, let's get let's get your dream. And I know that's why Jim's in the business too. We're here for we're in the people business. If you're not if you don't if you're not in the people business, get out of real estate. But I, that's why I work with Jim. That's They're really great. that's really exciting. And uh, yeah. Mr. Meyer, uh, definitely the other part of the Jim show here. Um, any final thoughts you have? I, I would just uh, reiterate is that. Uh, if you're thinking about buying a house and you and you're a little uh, afraid or you think you might not be qualified, call Kim. He'll stick with you for 427 days if he has to, and and I'd be happy to start sending you emails as new homes pop up on the market, so that by the time Kim does qualify you, you will be a, a, a master of the the market. You'll know what is a good deal when they pop up. So, you know, we all were a team here. We work together and we would love to serve you. Well, this is, this is great. And, you know, as we go out into the community today, uh, definitely um, as we're, we're, we're airing this when this is presented, of course, we've been dealing with the coronavirus and there's a lot going uh, going on out there and we hope that uh, you're able to be safe and that you're really able to control the stress that's out there because really there are some things beyond our control. Um, I'm very impressed with people that are really solid and confident in what they're doing. They understand as that statement says this too shall pass and so planning is not about dealing with the present but it's really about dealing with uh, the future and so as Alan Lakin said planning is taking the future bringing it into the present so that you can do something about it now. And so as we end out here, we hope that you find and are able to live your American dream by getting the house you desire, getting the money you need to be able to get the house that you truly believe you deserve. This is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, along with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold and Kim Walters, American Pacific Mortgage. Here's to you. Live your life.